Hi everyone, this is Divya from Quick Mommy Hacks. And September is actually the World Polycystic Ovary Syndrome Awareness Month. And on this occasion, I'm pleased to have Dr. Meena Murthy with us here today to answer some of our questions. So Dr. Meena Murthy, she is the Chief of the Division of Endocrinology, Metabolism and Nutrition at the St. Peter's University Hospital. She's also the Director of St. Peter's Thyroid and Diabetes Center and Director of SKN, South Asian Diabetes Center and South Asian Institute at the Department of Medicine. So amongst numerous awards during the last year, she received the prestigious New Jersey Hospital Association 2020 Physician of the Year recognition, NJ Senate Citation, and Senator's Physician of the Year Award for Diabetes Care and her dedicated service to enhance South Asian population health, as well as the St. Peter's Physician Appreciation Award. She's an exceptional endocrinologist and an educator with over 42 years of experience in the medical field. And it's my privilege to speak to her today on the topic of polycystic ovary syndrome and pregnancy. Hi, Dr. Murthy. Thank you for joining us today. So as you know, September is the World Polycystic Ovary Syndrome Awareness Month, and we'll be discussing about uh, PCOS and pregnancy. So I guess my first question would be, what is exactly polycystic ovary syndrome and what are the symptoms that we should be looking out for? So PCOS, uh, which means polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, is a very complex uh, problem and a chronic problem. When I say complex, I don't necessarily mean complicated. Uh, it is not one disease. Mm -hmm. It is not one you know, symptom or one problem. So that's why it's very confusing mm -hmm. and people think of it as a very complex condition. Main problem with polycystic ovarian syndrome is there is excess androgen or male hormone. Yeah. Whether one can measure it or not, uh, the cells you know, see uh, more of that. And so our reproductive axis, which connects our ovaries, which are the main organs for reproduction in women, uh, that connects the pituitary gland and the brain, you know, that whole axis, what we call as pituitary ovarian axis, is abnormal functioning because of that um, key issue with uh, high levels uh, of male hormone or hyperandrogenic state. Mm -hmm. So in some people, a uh, majority of reason why they have it is the genetics. In some people, the, the problem is the environment Mm -hmm. uh, which affected already a susceptible genetics. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about PCOS, we don't mean one kind of presentation in all, right? Mm -hmm. So there are very lean, you know, PCOS uh, women, and there are um, many obese PCOS mm -hmm. women. Um, so obesity and overweight can actually untangle the genetic disorder. And sometimes that's the primary problem. Whereas there could be very lean PCOS uh, patients where the genetics is, is the major thing. They didn't uh, have any you know, major environmental issue that's pushing that genetics or what we call as epigenetics isn't the main thing there. Um, so girls can present with precocious puberty or very delayed puberty. So puberty itself is abnormal. Uh, many, you know, in common when people are talking about, they're talking uh, in industrialized nations, uh, overweight, uh, you know, uh, girls or uh, young women. Uh, so in many cases there, it is delayed. There is menstrual irregularities. That's usually the first um, uh, note. And then as you go along, depending on the severity of PCOS, you will see um, all symptoms that are connected to high le higher levels of male hormone. Um, that could be uh, facial hair, body hair, uh, mm -hmm. hair loss on the scalp, um, uh, acne 
you know, mm -hmm. is another issue. So uh, women who don't have polycystic ovarian syndrome or young women can have these things. So just because one has acne or some menstrual irregularity, it doesn't mean that they have PCOS because many other menstrual irregularities overlap PCOS. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of confusion in diagnosis. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Murthy, as far as I know, typically spironolactone, metformin, and birth control pill are the kind of medications which are given to manage PCOS. So in your opinion, what is the side effect of these medications if they are taken for a prolonged period of time? So everyone starts with medications, but uh, I would usually start uh, with what patient can do to improve this and then what medication can do. Again, like I said, for everyone, it's not the same answer. Of course, uh, if the ovaries are um, significantly um, deranged in their steroid synthesis, we suppress them by giving oral contraceptive or birth control pills. You know, that's the usual mechanism. Very rarely someone needs uh, spironolactone, right? Uh, we use it for Two different purposes, whether it is ovarian or adrenal origin, um, but we have to remember they work very differently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we use uh, drugs which decrease the insulin um, mm -hmm. resistance, and that would be something like metformin. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so different uh, side effects for different drugs. Yeah. Um, as much as possible, you know when things are mild and when environmental input, whether from overweight or obesity is significant, we wanna address that rather than, you know, uh, um, medications, um, right? Uh, but when, you know, uh, you have ideal lifestyle, ideal body weight, ideal fitness, uh, you have worked on all of those things and you still have significant level abnormalities you would be treating with you know ovarian suppression especially if there is you know progressive growth of hair significant menstrual abnormalities mm -hmm. and that's a clinical decision of who and you know who should be treated it's not an absolute necessary thing right it's it's many times you know uh, a um, a decision based on the level of indication the benefits and the rest of these medications for that particular individual. For each okay. person, the risk of medication is different, uh, you know, uh, and also how they tolerate it, what their health values are about mm -hmm. taking medication, all of that yeah. comes into play. Okay. So, um, like, how do we know that we have been cured of uh, PCOS? Like, we can keep on taking the medications and everything and keep on doing the blood work, but like, uh, for example, like, how would you know that you are just like completely got rid of uh, PCOS or, you know, it exists and you just have to manage it? Blood work is not a good way to diagnose uh, okay. PCOS, although we use blood work to see what the associated manifestations of the PCOS. Uh, so PCOS is a clinical diagnosis. So, you know, people tell me my gynecologist did an ultrasound and they didn't see anything in the ovaries. Yeah. They did not see cysts in the ovaries. That doesn't mean someone does not have PCOS syndrome because we are talking about microscopic, not necessarily macroscopic. So sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we do see it, you know, uh, on an ultrasound, you know, uh, a polycystic nature of the ovaries. That's why we said different level of severity um, and different level of problems look different, but mm -hmm. it's a clinical diagnosis. It's yeah. not necessarily chemical diagnosis. So sometimes okay. testosterone can be in the normal ranges when you measure it mm -hmm. uh, or mildly elevated, you know. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about a chronic condition, we are not talking about cure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You know, when ovaries stop working in the menopausal state, and then yeah. maybe we can say, okay, we, we <laughs> have, you know, gone over the, the issue. Yeah. 
But in the reproductive age group, we think of managing the problem because as long as those ovaries are there, as long as, as our mechanisms of abnormality is set up in the physiology or mm -hmm. pathophysiology, then we just need to manage it. So I guess one of the questions that all the women with PCOS have is, uh, will they be able to conceive naturally? Like, will you be able to conceive naturally if you have polycystic OV syndrome? Most women do. Yeah. In, in fact, most women with PCOS uh, naturally, um, yeah. you know, get pregnant. Uh, but some women, again, depending on the severity, have difficulty uh, conceiving, conceiving. So infertility is a yeah. problem. Um, but if you look at all causes of infertility in females, PCOS actually has a very good response, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to uh, reproductive assistance, right? Okay. So we should always be uh, very um, optimistic and mm -hmm. we just have to work with professionals who understand this and who can get you into ideal situation mm -hmm. um, uh, with your physical health. Uh, you know, so sometimes people lost 30 pounds and just got pregnant. Uh, sometimes people just went on metformin and by two months mm -hmm. they got pregnant. You know, so, um, so multiple factors are involved. We want to correct all of these factors, whether something is contributing 10% and something is contributing 50%. Um, many women I work with, um, you know, who thought uh, PCOS is the reason they were not getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. And they just went away with their husband uh, for a cruise uh, for a month. <laughs> they just yeah. got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is the social restrictions we have, yeah. not, you know, uh, having relaxed time. Um, you know, stressors of daily life, so many things input into this physiology that, um, you know, just trying to make a holistic approach to it is the best strategy. And then, of course, many may need additional assistance uh, mm -hmm. by reproductive endocrinologists. And uh, women who suffer from PCOS, what can they do to have a complication-free pregnancy? The complications of pregnancy in PCOS are um, more related to trying to get pregnant. So any issues related to reproductive assistance, you know, sometimes, you know, people gain weight or have difficulty tolerating those medications. Mm -hmm. But pregnancy-related complications are not related to the ovarian problem, but more so are related to the insulin resistance. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so... Uh, um, they may already have impaired glucose tolerance or mm -hmm. diabetes. Uh, so all of that has to be screened ahead of time uh, because it is important to have metabolic control prior to getting pregnant. Yeah. So it is very important you work with your doctor to plan the pregnancy and yeah. make sure there is no issues related to gestational uh, you know, uh, issues related mm -hmm. to uh, this insulin resistance and diabetes. So one of the symptoms that women with PCOS have is irregular periods. So how would one know when to exactly test for pregnancy if you have PCOS? The menstrual irregularities can be very varied, meaning um, the, the mildest form could be instead of 28 day say, cycle, someone can have 35 day cycles or 40 day cycles. Sometimes mm -hmm. they skip a cycle. Sometimes people mm -hmm. skip several months of cycle, mm -hmm. right? So it depends on um, the same person can have mm -hmm. varied amount of, um, you know, ovulation uh, peak times, you mm -hmm. know. Although a pattern is somewhat predictable in a woman over a period of time, you know, short period of time, but in their lifetime, it could vary a lot. Um, so best is to track when you're ovulating, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so usually in, you know, normal cycles, ovulation should happen in about 14 days after the you know, first menstrual. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, day, mm -hmm. uh, but 
that could be 18 days or 20 days or sometime early. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are many ways to track the ovulation. So mm -hmm. PCOS uh, women and some cycles will be an ovulatory, meaning they won't mm -hmm. have ovulation. That's so it's okay. important that they um, follow that, right? Okay. Like track that ovulation time. So I guess my next question would be, uh, once a woman with PCOS is able to become pregnant successfully, um, are there any kind of uh, excessive discomforts that a person suffers compared to a person who doesn't have PCOS? And are there any risks uh, for the baby at that time? All of this is usually related to that insulin resistance I was talking about. Yeah. So yeah. They have you know excess propensity to gain weight mm -hmm. uh, you know if you have salt loading um, uh, calories like sugars you know the, the craving that people feel if their body is set in a particular way they may yeah. feel the craving more or they may have some reactive symptoms related to it but if they eat right and if they exercise right throughout the pregnancy uh, those symptoms, you know, can be managed. So to be aware of it, because what we do, our behavior can make symptoms worse. Mm -hmm. Meaning uh, it is, you know, when we eat something, we feel like eating more of that. And in pregnancy, there is natural cravings for things because the body's hormonal system is completely changed. How it cues the brain is completely changed. So to pay attention to um, what we are eating mm -hmm. and how the plate looks like and not go by what the brain is saying to us yes. is very, very important. So in your opinion, does PCOS affect uh, breastfeeding or postpartum recovery in any way? They may have um, issues with, with menstrual cycles, um, mm -hmm. you know, when they stop breastfeeding, uh, true. Okay. Um, but again, that's mainly because during pregnancy, we do gather extra fat cells as women. Mm -hmm. You know, women's body changes yeah. significantly during mm -hmm. puberty, during pregnancy, and during menopause. And those extra fat cells we make, um, <laughs> they don't work very well. Yeah, yeah. And so we may have more of a you know, menstrual cycle disorder in some mm -hmm. ways, whereas for some women, it actually gets better. So Dr. Murthy, approximately 25% of the women who suffer from PCOS also have hypothyroidism. So in your opinion, uh, is PCOS and hypothyroidism, are they related in any way? And what are their collective effects on the pregnancy? Well, hypothyroidism is a common condition and PCOS is a common condition. Mm -hmm. So that is the association you know, common conditions are found commonly. And PCOS women come into attention to the doctors, um, especially endocrinologists. So they are more diagnosed with subtle hypothyroidism is diagnosed in them and treated in them, right? So usually weight gain is associated uh, with PCOS because of insulin resistance. So what do you think like controlling the weight, uh, can it help in controlling PCOS as well? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. We don't want to add fuel to the fire. That's mm -hmm. what I tell my patients. So we don't want to have any extra fat cells that yeah. can convert that estrogen to androgen, right? Mm -hmm. And even if we are at ideal weight and fitness, we may still have menstrual problems. And then we manage that in other ways. So that brings me to my next question. Is there anything that you can do nutrition-wise or diet-wise to balance your hormones? Absolutely. Yeah. You can yeah. hack your own hormones is what I say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I was going for. If yeah. you can hack your own hormones. Um, absolutely. Uh, so uh, what specifically, you know, I just think a great balance, uh, what we usually need. But in general, if we are sedentary people, it is important to cut down the salt, cut down the calories, increase food which has high level of micronutrients with low level of calories, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so I mean, as much as possible, 
fresh and raw and natural as it is, or if it needs cooking, you know, one step cooking. And everything that we have harvested is a problem, whether it's chicken or whether it's grains, yeah. or whatever, right? So um, keeping the diet balanced, prudent, mm -hmm. and um, not engineered by you or others as much as possible. <laughs> so that's how yeah. I... So that brings me to my last question, which is, uh, is are there any words of advice for women uh, with PCOS who are trying to get pregnant? Uh, be very optimistic. To understand your body, get the body in good control first. Mm -hmm. So work with somebody who is holistic, somebody who understands your body to get it in the right fitness, right weight, uh, right attitude. Relax. Um, slow down in your life. Um, spend a lot of time with your partner you know, in a relaxed way. And if you need reproductive assistance, don't waste a lot of time. Stress is a factor that will worsen everything. Stress mm -hmm. about trying to get pregnant is mm -hmm. not a good thing. I would say, you know, do your best. Mm -hmm. uh, focus on the action, not contemplation of whether, why, how, mm -hmm. all of those things. For mm -hmm. everyone, it is possible, no matter what level of difficulty. Thank you, Dr. Murthy, for all your time and for answering all our questions so patiently. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Quick Mommy Hacks, and follow me on Instagram for some personal tips on pregnancy, childbirth, and motherhood. Also, do leave your feedback and feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you.